What's up guys? Hey, my name is Tim Summers. I'm the social media pastor for Elevation Youth. And whether you just kind of stumbled across this channel or whether you are with your e-group right now, with people that you believe in, people that you love, and people that ultimately care about you, what you are about to see is a conversation, an interview perhaps, with Pastor Mike Todd and me as we were driving and rushing him to the airport. It's been pretty cool to be able to get a little insight of what God has been doing through him and through his church and I believe that what today is going to be all about is being able to help you provoke some conversation with each other and so maybe you're watching this by yourself hey subscribe to this channel click the bell for notifications comment we would love to be able to interact with you but if you are with your e-group right now make sure you're leaning in taking notes don't let your leader do all the work okay come on help us out with this and I really believe it's gonna be beneficial to what God wants to do through you so I hope you enjoy it. Check this out. Help me out. My brother. Can I put on my glasses or should I be glasses list? Oh, you can do whatever. You're good. Oh, man. Bro, this now, is from. Are you from uh, originally like all Tulsa? Born and raised in T Town. Okay. And I loved it. Are you an OU fan or an OSU fan? Oh, you, bro. Like, oh, my gosh. OU, man. I, I'm sorry, but it's just one of those things. I know. I know. My it's wife, okay. My wife graduated from OSU. God bless you. So, <laughs> no, I love everybody, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of those people that's like divided like that. I want them to hear my message. So, I'll go for whoever. OSU, oh, yeah. yeah, listen. OSU! Oh, OSU oh, Cowboys, come on, put them up. Like, okay. I, I'm down for whoever. <laughs> Okay, well, here's the real question then. <sighs> OKC fan? Thunder? I, I used to be, bro. And then KD left and you got upset. Bro, he <laughs> he played us so bad. He, I mean, I was at game six when the uh, the Warriors beat him and that was it. That was oh, his really? last, I was at the last game. Oh, wow. Bro, they gave that game to Golden State. They, I, I, I just, it oh was devastating. And I think if I wouldn't have been at the game, yes. If I wouldn't that have makes sense. if I wouldn't have been at the game, <laughs> if I wouldn't have seen the give up, if I wouldn't have been able to look in their eyes and be like, you don't want this. Like yeah. maybe I would have been a little more, you know. I, I was excited to see him win a championship, oh, but man. it's just like, I don't even, yeah. Anyway, I don't wanna talk no more. Yeah. I just <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm I'm Bad a subject. I'm a LeBron bandwagon now. Okay, I'm, all right. I'm just wherever he goes. Wherever I'm he just, goes, yeah, you're in. All right, Lakers okay. all the way. Yeah, in. let's go. <laughs> so I know, like, speaking of rushing, as we're rushing to the to the airport, to the my airport. wife does not want me to miss this flight. We are not going. to We're miss not going to miss this we're flight. Not miss let's it. do it. Jesus' name. In the name. <laughs> I tell people all the time, man, less is more. Okay. Because God gave me a clear word to stop striving, to stop using my effort and energy to make things happen, and just to obey. And that word for me meant stride, S-T-R-I-D-E. Yeah. And that means to walk in long, decisive steps yeah. in an intended direction. Bro, and I'm a runner. I don't, I don't walk nowhere. Like, I don't, like, that concept of slowing down and and being method man please i'm gonna bust <laughs> through the wall and and god said but then you would get the glory mm. but if if you're going at a pace that doesn't match what i'm doing then i get the glory and so he told me to slow down he told me don't go to any green rooms don't don't try to connect i'm a naturally extroverted person i'll make relationships he said don't do all of that yeah he said he said let me do it and literally that resulted in December, 2017. Okay. Like this, just this past year, yeah. December like 22nd, 23rd, something like that. A girl that I've never met, doesn't go to our church. She posted a 10 minute clip of a sermon series that I did in August that year. So yeah. not even the sermon series was in called Relationship Goals. She posted it on Twitter. I didn't even have a Twitter account. And 2 million people watched it in 48 hours. Many of us are products of people shooting and trying to have relationship without proper aim. I mean, I mean. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like when people ask me like what? And after that, I mean, I had 4,000 Instagram followers in December. 
Yeah. Like, so so people are like, who did you hire? Uh-huh, uh-huh. What is the, the Holy Spirit? And it's because of what you did in private. Yes, sir. It, it's, it's, this is not new. It's just seen. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that people have to realize. I was a youth pastor for four years. And, um, and then the executive pastor, I started as the sound man at my church that I pastor now. Like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah. about like obeying, choosing to live by the spirit. And the results are like you were doing everything over here, mm-hmm. but you don't even have to do you don't the have to thing. Worry you don't it. have to worry about it. And I mean, so views went crazy and this went bad and that. And so, and it's all God, bro, because we obey. We did less. I mean, it's kind of like this alarm going off right here. It's just like God was like, let's go. Like, and everything stopped and he did it. You know, I think that kind of stuff is is definitely, you know, relevant to nowadays because everyone is constantly talking about, um, you know, dreaming, hustling, oh, winning. Man. Like, you got to do what you got to do. I, I even saw, um, I'm a fan of Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. But uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, he, and he was like, he just did something in the Forbes magazine, like mm-hmm. incredible, like most paid actor yep. in Forbes magazine. And it was interesting, his Instagram uh, said, my war or my boss is the world. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, how, like... They're gonna kill him. It, like, like, this is the thing that nobody understands. He gets paid 20, 25 million dollars a picture. Yeah. It'll never be enough. Yeah. Like, like... And that's it, what it, everyone's it never, constantly striving for. Bro, you're striving to... It's a treadmill. Yep. That nothing will ever be enough. It'll never be good enough. You you go from having Roman noodles and sleeping on a a, a floor to one one twenty five million dollar <laughs> picture. I mean, at that moment, that would have been enough to I'm good for the rest of my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done ten this year. It'll never be enough. Yeah. Because the thing about the world, the thing about our flesh, the thing about is it always leaves you wanting more. It can never fill you up. That's why Jesus told the woman who had, uh, she was a Samaritan woman and she had been with all these people. Mm -hmm. He said, let me give you a drink that, that you'll actually get full on. Yeah. Like, like, I know you've been drinking a lot. Like you've been, you've been tasting and seeing all these other things. And it's literally taking from you. It's ruined your marriage. You're with a man right now that ain't even your husband. Like, he says all this stuff, but let me give you a drink that you'll never have to thirst again. And that's, bro, what I'm experiencing. People don't actually think that God has a good plan for their life. Like, that. that's honestly where all of this is rooted, is that they don't think God is good, and they don't think that His plan for their life would equal what they think. And the problem with that thinking is, is that when you start living, making your own plan, you have to sustain everything you make up. And what God calls for, he sustains. What you make up, you sustain. And this is why people are burnt out. This is why people in relationships, they hate, they made that up. Like you made, you, you did that. And so now until God starts it. The, the scripture that always comes back to me is that he that began a good work yeah. is going to be faithful to finish it. The key to that is he has to begin it. Yeah. Like, it can't be the good work. He doesn't say, like, the good work you started, he's going to finish. Mm-hmm. It's the work that he began it. Yeah. When did you become a youth pastor? I was a youth pastor, bro. Honestly, I don't, I need to go back and look at the date because I was tricked into youth pastor. Yeah. <laughs> like God told me four things before I walked in the room, bro. He said, be real, tell on yourself, don't judge them, love them first. Oh That's it. Goodness. Be real, tell on yourself, don't judge them, love them first. And I just, I mean, I went in there, I didn't prepare, bro. There was no sermon. I had no Bible. I just was going to talk to him with the scriptures that I knew yeah, yeah. and just kind of be real and relate to him. Yeah. And Within six months, 150 young people were coming and there was 20 adults in the church. And so it was meeting on Sunday nights. Mm-hmm. And so most people go to youth group because their parents go to the church and it's a more youthful uh, expression. So yeah. these kids was coming 
by themselves. There was 20 adults in the church. I was like, this is funny and cute, but I'm about to move to L.A., <laughs> New York. I just got married. I was doing music production full time. Okay. And I was just like, yeah, this is not going to work. I, I had my own plan. Yeah. I, I, and I was good. Like, it wasn't like I do beats. Like, not that. Like, I was making money doing it. Like, that was my only job. And God was like, yeah, many of the plans of man, but my purpose. And he was, he was guiding me into this thing a year later. Um, I'm still there, so it's a year that's gone by. 250 young people coming, 22 adults in the church. Like, so Sunday nights would be a sea of young people, and we would leave and go to a room, no microphone, and we would just sit in a circle, and I would talk to them. And, uh, man, that was the beginning, and it grew to over 800 young people. And, I mean, it was just, I mean, it's just dumb, bro. And at some point, I was like, oh, God, I think... Yep. I think God wants me to do this. <laughs> no, 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 yep. no. And I mean, I went from that, the churches merged together, my parents' church and uh, the church I was running sound with. I mean, God will do anything yeah. to get you where he wants to do. Like, it was like God like was like, yeah, I'm a, <laughs> yeah. And, and the pastor came back and said, I think you're supposed to be the next pastor of the church. Don't worry. It'll be five years from now. That was in 2014, September. Um, and I became the pastor February 1st, 2015. And quick, bro, I mean, it was like, God was like, this is what I want to happen. And since then, man, we've, me and my wife have been leading that church. And all I can say is there's been a supernatural grace that came over us to do that and to represent. Like, that's why I wear the represent, represent, yeah. represent. That's what I'm called to do is to represent, represent and represent God. Because everybody's heard about God. Everybody has a version of God. But what if people talked about you and it didn't represent you? Like, what if people was like, you know, that crazy youth pastor and he got long black hair and he's short and he's quiet and introverted. They wouldn't be talking about you. Yeah. But somebody now has a perception that that's you. Yeah. And that's how God feels all the time is that people won't represent him or represent him properly. And so I just said, OK, God, I'll I'll do that. Like to anybody. And we've just been doing that in Tulsa, man. And God said, okay, I want the world to see it. Now. That's and so, yeah, man, I, but the formula hasn't changed. Yeah. We're not doing anything different. different. We're, we're doing everything. We, we have to be more deliberate now to keep doing the same things. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's why I just tell people, man, what you do in the pasture matters when nobody can see. When David defeated the bear and the lion, Goliath, was just the first time everybody else would Sorry. see it. Like, but he was comfortable. And that's why people, they, they get starstruck or overwhelmed by a moment that tells you that they haven't been doing it in the pasture. Wow. Like, they, they haven't been doing the- That's you, not you, normal for them. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is not, this wasn't your moment to have a spotlight on what you already do this was the moment where you about to freeze up because you've never done it before. Yeah. And that's where I just, my encouragement to this generation is it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you get views, do the Bible study. Like, like, yeah, it doesn't matter if only one person comes, write the song, yeah. like do like work on what God has placed in you because you don't know when God is going to put that spotlight on you and put a platform under your feet. And a platform is not a stage. A platform is just a raised position of what you would already do. Yeah. And so I'm just a big, I'm an advocate, man, of working your process. Wow. So I know I just talked for like 10 no, minutes. So I believe you, bro. I love you, man. I love you.